What's up guys, Sharpen here, and oh boy, I don't know what to say. You guys wanted another lighting tutorial. I have like four of them already. But okay, my explanation methods were not the best. I went all college lecture on ya. So I'm gonna try to fix it today with the general lighting tutorial. I know you guys voted for environmental lighting, but let's break this down once and for all. I'm gonna explain lighting in general without the formulas and stuff, and also give you some examples such as environmental lighting, ambient lighting, and basically some examples where you would use that in practice. I'm gonna try to give you as much knowledge and complicate as less as possible. So if you like the idea, drop a like on the video and hit the bell because I'm struggling with this. I've made four of these already. By the way, before I start, I have a new background here wooden house office thing if you guys like it let me know in the poll because I'm thinking about keeping it I don't want to be constantly making new backgrounds all the time so let me know if you like it so I can have a default and keep it throughout my tutorials but yes I've taken a lot of your time already let's begin the lighting tutorial and here we are using my mountain schematic once again so I have this block here with the default lighting you guys all know this right you can tell it's ugly increase the sunlight trend makes it look a bit better but then again it's not it so what I want to do here here and it will be useful turn the sunlight completely off now I have this okay we obviously need a light source for this so let's add a spotlight so if you guys are confused when to use spotlights when to use point lights there's no difference between them except point lights emit light in all direction and spotlights only in one direction I'm using spotlights because they consume less RAM if you were to use point lights the computer needs to generate all the light behind it which you don't even need so I use spotlights most of my time unless the light source is in the center of the image then you need a point light let's position this spotlight directed at your target name it key light we're gonna do a standard three-point lighting composition I increase the fade size increase the spot radius decrease the spot sharpness maybe increase all of this this is your key light let's keep the color white for now we're gonna mess with the tones later now we have some diversity on the block which is nice but it's not enough we need to add a backlight now essentially a backlight is what shines from behind the object onto the object and the background light is also the strongest light. I'm not gonna use them this time because they're too confusing, but if you're curious, here's the formula. You can either use it or not, but I'm explaining without the formula because a lot of you guys got confused last time. There's only light on the ground, so this backlight is kind of useless in this case. Let's keep it invisible and see if we need it in the future. We need a third light, it's called a fill light. This fill light is usually very, very close to the camera and shines towards the object. The fill light is usually weaker. So this is without the fill light and the fill light just basically fills in the shadow. See the difference with the fill light? It doesn't matter. The block should not have the same tone across all faces. You need some diversity, as I said before. But this is it. This is the three-point lighting composition. But the image kind of looks awkward because the background is still dark. That's because most movies use the four-point lighting method. This is good for studio photography and portraits and stuff. But here, we're out in nature and we need a background light. The background light is different from the backlight because the backlight shines on the character and the background light lights the background. Now, our key light comes from the left side, so background light should be coming from the same side. So Let's increase that. My animator's lights are were always kind of funky, so let's duplicate this light and position it. Have multiple background lights from other directions, so it looks more environmental. Keep the radius up, but put the color down a bit. So it's like a second fill light only for the background. We just made a five-point lighting composition. Usually, you don't need the backlight in my animator, but in this case, this backlight serves as a reflection of the sky, and it actually does contribute to the whole experience. Look at this. Wow! It actually does look like very good lighting. Just got my thumbnail here. So I have five spotlights with different settings. This will most likely start lagging your computer so I recommend you click this gear icon to open the settings go to render under here you see the spotlight buffer size I have it on gigantic because my PC is a beast you can drop it down to small or something and it will make the image look more chunky for the time being but it will increase your performance drastically as you see this is working way smoother than it was before after you export just put it back to the original setting like you had it before if I put all of this in a folder make it invisible turn up the sunlight color again you see what I'm talking about here's a side-by-side -side comparison which one does look better honestly my animator's lighting is not that advanced and you have to work your way around it. So if you guys have seen my crawling tutorial, I have made some pretty decent lighting here. Also, the, the Lancer could be a bit too much. I'm seeing this right now. This lighting actually looks pretty good. We have this spotlight, which is the background light. This spotlight, which is the fill light because these faces were dark, as you see on this screen here. This light, which is my key light or my main light. Another key light. I just want to make the key light stronger, so I just duplicate the light. Also, this one is great, so dark. 
darker, so it's not as intense. Now, while we're at it, this does look nice. These spotlights create an amazing lighting, but your camera is going to change all the time. Your character is going to have different positions all the time. So technically, you would have to adjust the lighting every single time you change the camera. So I didn't divide it for every single shot. There was a different lighting, which I need to set up individually all the time. You don't want that. You want to do something called environmental light. You position the lights on the scene and you no longer have to worry about lighting because the lighting is then done. You position the lights in, in order to always look good. Now, I'm gonna try to position some environmental lighting here. This spotlight is gonna be where the sun is positioned. But then, this happens. Glowing edges. Okay, let's go for gigantic. As you see what happens, the effect is now smaller. But it's still quite visible. Here's an idea. Select your mountain, go for scale, increase it up. The effect is less visible than before, so I'll take this as a win. And for someone down here, this looks like a casual daytime. Look, this looks like a nice daytime lighting, right? But you probably noticed something funny. These shadows here, because each spotlight is now creating its own individual shadow. Plus, we're already on gigantic, so there's not much we can do here. What would be preferable to do is duplicate this, move it slightly away, and duplicate it again, move it slightly away. And I'll select all of them, decrease the light a bit so it's like more natural still. Now we have three of them for one. Do the same with fill light and key light and I think my computer is going to crash. So put my spotlight buffer size to small so I can work with this, but it looks like this at the final cut. Decrease the color until it still remains as the key light, like this. And I'm getting really laggy, and my PC is a beast, so I don't think you're gonna be able to use this right. Now, of course, the lighting looks very good, but we are once again experiencing the glowing edges, as you see here. What you could do is bring the spotlights closer, have smaller values, and that will fix it. Or help yourself with the sun. So if I delete this whole lighting thing, I'm gonna help myself with the sun in this case, so reset. This does not look too bad if we come to think of what we had before. So I want to add a spotlight only to serve as a fill light. So now the sun is going to be my key light and this is diffusing your shadows. Small touch, but it's very important. It's a very important touch. Also sun-like strength could be brought up so we have the better effect. It looks rounded and realistic now. Sometimes it would be nice to have a backlight as well. So. If you take a look at this scenery, this looks like some pretty solid lighting. If I turn these off, you instantly see the difference. All it took was two simple lights and it already looks that much better. Let's take a look at the night settings, how you do in night sky. Do not, my dear friend, do not do this ever. Don't do it, it's ugly. I forbid you doing that. Instead, add the background yourself. I'm gonna browse for it cold night. And now, what you want to do with the lighting, go to background, sunlight color, like a bright desaturated indigo blue color. The darker you go, the darker the night, like this. Also, the ambient colors should be brought down like so. We're not done because, you know, the light and stuff desaturated bluish because there are still clouds in the sky there's still stuff which reflects light so you still need a fill light and the back light of course the same thing just slightly this is without the light this is with the light you see some small difference but it just makes it more smooth no lights with lights adds this extra layer of depth so this makes it basically just a small tint to it. You see it looks nice with this. Now finally, let's take a look at some random but useful examples you might find useful in your animations. Okay, in the comment section, somebody asked me about horror lighting. And this is the default look. No lighting, no anything. I just decreased the ambient shadow so it's more dark. And with the lighting, it looks like this. Automatically. Look at the difference, guys. The first light is down here and it's basically just enough to illuminate this place. Okay, let me turn the other ones off. It's dark gray, so it's very dark. Giving some depth to this room. Second one is up here and it's above the stairs. It's basically here so it illuminates this set of stairs here. As you see, it's a bit brighter, slightly red, so it gives that creepy tone. And finally, we have a light in this room, which is entirely red, and its sole purpose is to make the room behind this door seem like it has something in it. Plus, it shines some light onto the ground here, as you see, which is just that extra layer again. But all of them combined makes it look intentional. It's a good lighting, as you see here. And now, as as of the new Minimator, you have a ton of camera effects which can help you 
fringe, definitely need it. If you're going to use fringe, use it minimally. The scenery here is very dark, so if I just zoom in here, you see you can barely see the fringe as it is. So we're not gonna mess with the settings, but I usually keep my fringe at like 6% or so. That's how low a fringe you actually need in your animation. It's a horror lighting, so let's go for contrast. Saturation could be dropped down to 80 or so, so it's more blank. And color burn could be a bit red-ish. Then of course, the vignette. Let's go for settings, and down in render, camera effect. Tick it off, this is without the camera effect, this is with the camera effect. You see what a greater effect you can get with the camera by itself, as well as with the lighting. So this was hard lighting, let's take a look at something else. Is this shaders? No, but it does look pretty cool. This is a nether lighting, which I've done the same principle. Basically, let me explain. This is the world, and this is an inverted cube, which represents the walls of this. It's basically just the outline of the map. Then we have the custom fog color, being the same color as the cube, being present enough to hide the edges. In here here we have another copy of the world, which is using a texture pack to only display glowing parts. I'll put a link in the description. I made the texture pack myself, by the way, for you to have. And it has brightness 100%. These glowing blocks are not affected by fog, so you can still see the lava through all the fog and stuff. That's important. One spotlight for the glowstone, another for the fire, another for the lava here, another one down there for those two lava streams. It would be preferable to layer the light levels down, like I showed you once before. Add multiple lights, with the radius being smaller and smaller, and the colors being brighter and brighter. It adds layers to it. Now I think the only thing I could add here is some camera effects. Lens dirt? Okay, if you want to, let's go for a texture. Bras. Radius all the way up, intensity all the way up, power all the way down so you can see where the effect is. Alright, let's go for the intensity slightly drop. Saturation of 90 and increase the vibrance 30% or so. This, I like that. Depending on what kind of nether you want. So this is very aggressive and dark. This is mostly like burning bright. Oh yeah, this is also going in the thumbnail, definitely. All right, now you see how these things work. You can even try to use some lens flares or glow textures. Hold on, I'm gonna apply that just because I can. Add a new surface, bras for texture, and I'm gonna select this specular texture, which is nothing more than a simple round gradient. I'll put the link in the description for that as well. I've made that for you. And now if I try to scale this up, it's obviously too much. Let's make it glow. Let's make it only render glow. And now let's go to glow color and bring that glow color down. Uh, I would personally want to bring it over to lava because this glowstone is already bright as it is. Oh yeah. Glow color, now let's go for slightly red-ish, orange-ish, like this. I see lens dirt way too high, so let's bring this down so I don't have as much lens dirt. Now tell me this doesn't look nice. Basically, I think you guys get the point. Use multiple lights to light your character from multiple directions, but I recommend you position your three-point lighting for each shot. It might be a pain, but it's gonna look a lot better. Also, for special sceneries like the nether, use the fog, use the glow feature, also multiple lights. You get where I'm going with this. Basically, all faces need to be lit, but they need to have different amount of brightness. So we have diversity in lights. Also, use the camera to your advantage because the camera is overpowered in this update. Anyway, that is all for my tutorial. I hope you have learned a thing or two because this is like the fourth or fifth tutorial lighting I've done so far. But yeah, I'm glad to help. Good luck with your lighting and make me proud. Thanks again for watching and stay sharp.